it's crooked. Um, how to fix it. It's fine. It's cool. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I had this desire, this whimsy, to just go camping today. It's 90 degrees. So that's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. I've been dreaming and scheming about this for a couple of months. I've been collecting camping gear here and there. And I just like every weekend that's come up to this point, I'm like, well, I'll just go there when I'm more ready. I'll just like get myself more organized. Screw that. Like, I'm just not, I'm just going to go. I don't think I'm well prepared. I did not plan this out well. I don't have a reservation. I don't even know if I'm going to get a campsite today because they look fully booked. But they do have some walk-ins available, so I'm going to hope. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to show you <laughs> the gear that I have been collecting. I've gotten a lot of it on sale over the past couple months, which has been exciting because some of it's pretty you know, like hefty gear, and I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's do it together. So here's the basic stuff that I'm bringing with me for this journey. Don't know if I mentioned, I'm planning on sleeping in my car, which is a Chrysler Pacifica minivan. So I have purchased a sleeping bag and an inflatable camping mattress and a camping pillow. And I didn't get the lightest weight things, but I also didn't get the heaviest, bulkiest things because the idea is if I like this sort of thing, I wanted to have stuff that I could pack and take on airplanes to be able to do this in other parts of the country and hopefully eventually world. So I did some research, I invested in some gear that would be compatible with that. Like the camp chairs and stuff, I probably wouldn't like take those with me, but just, you know, basic sleeping gear. Um, and I'll show you all this more in detail at some point, I'm sure. Um, I got a Helinox or Helinox. I'm not exactly sure how the company pronounces it, but I got a table and a chair, some tarps, four by six and a six by eight, just to throw in, feels like a good thing to have, some bungee cables, some magnets, some mosquito netting, because I'm gonna like kind of rig a makeshift mosquito screen for my sunroof. I'm actually gonna do this probably when I'm there because I just, I'm running, I wanna make sure I'm there right at check-ins to see if I can get a spot. Mosquito stuff, this little fan. A lot of these recommendations, these products are recommendations from YouTubers I follow that do this sort of thing regularly. Uh, this little USB fan, um, headlamp, lantern, um, this is not necessarily for this trip because I'm looking to stay at um, campground that has like a toilet facility, but I feel like they're just good things to have. Go Girl is great. I used that in my Moab trip. Cool cloth, if you don't have TP, is nice. And a shovel. I'll let you deduce what that's for. In terms of cooking, I've decided because it's so hot, I'm not even going to bring my... Um, stove. I did buy a camping stove, but I'm just doing kind of snack style um, smorgasbord, if you will, for dinner. I'm not even. I don't even know if I'm gonna need soap. This is a little like dish cleaning tool. I'm not even bringing a dish. Oh, I do need to bring a bowl. I gotta throw that in with myself. So I do need a bowl for my breakfast. But I just have these leftover water jugs in my house from past things. So I thought I would just use those up. Personal safety is important. Um, pepper spray goes on my keys. And, oh yeah, let me show you the thing that's a little over the top. An external battery source. Do I need this mega battery for a one night camping trip that's less than an hour from my house? No, but it was on a great sale of a couple months ago and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get the big one in case this turns into a thing, figure it the resale value is well, like high, so I could, oh, I saved this for you guys because it's so satisfying to do that, isn't it? Woo! Um, I figured I could resell it if I don't end up using it or liking it or needing it, but it can charge via my car through this um, 12 volt charger. While I'm driving, I also have the solar panels for it. It's fully charged now. I don't think I need to bring any charging things for it. I'll probably throw the um, car charger thing in the car. It comes with both a uh, regular plug-in charger and then a, a, a like a car volt, 12 volt charger. I, don't, I really don't know what 
electrical terms I'm using or if I'm using them correctly, but I'll throw that in with the car stuff just to have it. As I mentioned, I have a Chrysler Pacifica. I cleaned it out. I'm going to stow the back seats, which they do automatically, as we Disney lovers would say. They just fold right on in. So satisfying. We'll just, we'll just let you watch that in all of its satisfying glory. Would you look at that? I'm just gonna vacuum up these bits too. So it's not flat, right? But it's so ample. I'm not exactly sure, like I didn't wanna like build a platform or do anything like that right now because I just didn't, like I said, I'm just testing this out. I mean, I could even sleep just sideways at the top flat part there. Like that's a possibility. It's so deep and that's where the um, sunroof is too. So it'd be so cool to be able to wake up with that open. I did purchase custom window um, coverings made out of Reflectix, which can either keep the car warm or cool, depending on which way you put them in and out, and I'll show you that later. So those are coming with me, and that that's basically it. For food, okay, this is a massive cooler for not very many things, but I bought this size in particular thinking about future trips with my um, little ones and for longer trips. So this holds a lot more than what I'm putting in it uh, and that's great. Uh, so I've got snack, I've got cut veggies and hummus and some uh, dairy-free queso for dinner, yum. Berries and yogurt, that's a, I think it's like a coconut yogurt and granola for breakfast. An extra bar in case I need a snack some chocolate for dessert. I actually think I might try to throw one of my water jugs in there, see if that fits. And then chips, a spoon, a bag full of things like bags to pick up trash and gloves in case I, you know, need to do some campsite pickup kinds of stuff. You never know what mess people will leave. Hopefully people follow the rules of leave no trace. And then paper towels, of course, I also threw a roll of toilet paper into this tub which has all the stuff that I showed you it's laid out on the table and yeah that's everything I'm bringing <laughs> seems like a lot but you know everything has a purpose and I don't know maybe it doesn't seem like a lot it really isn't that much oh that bag has all my like personal stuff in it some clothes and doodads I guess I'll show you that later I don't know if that's exciting or not okay let's back up the car well, I made it. Uh, I had to wait an hour in the office, but I was the first one when the spots opened up, and there were only two available that opened up, so the early bird gets the worm. Next time, make a reservation. I did try to make a reservation, but it was full. And I'm glad that I'm scouting it out this um, weekend, because it might be a nice spot to bring the kids. It's close to home and on the beach. Anyway, I already got bugs coming in. Didn't think about that. I'm gonna put some bug, I have some bug wipes. I'm gonna put that on. But um, I blacked out the windows just to keep the car as cool as possible. I'm gonna close the sunroof. I was just playing with it. But um, yeah, I, I'm gonna kinda set up stuff. I'm just gonna go on the beach, I think, go for a walk, mostly. And then there's so much daylight this time of year. I don't need to like panic to do anything and I'm not, on any sort of timeline or in any sort of rush, and that's just the beauty of camping. Solo especially. I just do what I want. I can see how it would be nice to have some sort of platform to make like a level situation. So if I like this, I might do it a few more times. I might kind of home DIY rig something. Yeah, I need to get the books for you. But we'll see. Today is just about enjoying something, trying something new, stepping into something I've been dreaming about doing, and seeing if it pans out. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I am going to close up shop here, I think, and then just go for a wander on the beach and uh, take it from there. <laughs> Here, 
This is where I'm camping and I'm parked up about here. Right now I'm down here and I'm just looking at this map of the Illinois Beach State Park. I'm noticing right next to the campsite is a decommissioned nuclear power station. Fascinating. I kind of want to walk up this way tomorrow. Maybe hike up that way. Kiss my sweaty walk look at my sweat um I was just going to explore like see the water and I just kept walking and then I found some hiking trails and I went on a hike I mean I saw I went through it's like almost sandy dune duney sort of trails by I think it's called the dead snake river fortunately didn't see any snakes dead or alive so that was a blessing um and that was just so peaceful and beautiful. It was really just gorgeous and quiet. There's like between the campsite and where that trail, that um, series of trails is, um, a public beach that is very crowded. Because it's like summer, everybody's excited. I get it. It's like super crowded. But the trail was so peaceful and this campground is so peaceful. So I've got my cut up peppers and cucumbers. I haven't done anything. I haven't set up anything. I'm just like, why bother? I might not even get out my chair and my little table because I might just sit in my my van with the hatch open. It works. Some everything hummus. I'm gonna eat this. And then I might go stick my feet in the lake because my feet are hot. I'm the whole, all of me is hot, but that, I feel like that would be really refreshing. Mm. This is what I'm looking at out of the back of my van. Pretty peaceful. The campsites are a little closer together than I would probably choose, but I'm looking out onto an abandoned beach building, and that's the trail to the beach right there. screening. I'm using half of it. And some magnets. And $3 for two, two boxes. $6. It's like an under $10 solution. We'll see how it goes. Get a little air in there and then I'll plug in my fan and hope it'll be fine. Okay, I thought I'd give you a look at how I've set everything up. This is the back of the car, right? I don't think I actually showed my campsite. So this is kind of what the, the scene is. You see, they're pretty close together. I'm Pretty close, but that's the beach access right there. And then I also have a picnic table and a fire pit. It's way too hot to light a fire, in my opinion, right now, so I'm not going to. 
Um, but the flattest area of the minivan without anything like modifications and the widest area is where the, you know, the second row usually is, but they're stowed and goad, whatever, uh, at the moment. So we'll see if that works. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my left side, so I'm facing a little bit uphill, which I think is preferable. And um, I sleep curled up. I don't usually extend. If this doesn't work, I'll just shuffle things around and I'll figure it out. But got I'm going to try the things, right? So I've got my cooler and my bag of food up here. I've got the camp chair and table. I was going to use those if it was like a little bit more private and I wanted to sit out and stuff, but I don't. I have two yoga mats. Um, I don't travel really anywhere without a yoga mat. One, I've got my mattress, air bed mattress pad thingy on, and this is the one I would practice on. I'm thinking I might try to do yoga on the beach in the morning. I'm going to get up with sunrise, hopefully. My bin of goodies that I showed you at the house. And, oh yeah, okay, so you're supposed to like heat up, but I'm not heating anything this trip, so I just left it in the hot car. <laughs> okay, so now I'll show you I've got, I really doubt I'm getting in that sleeping bag tonight. In fact, I might just put the whole thing away and just sleep on the um, mat, because it just might be too hot. We'll see. I got my bag of stuff, my jackery, the fan, I just kind of wedged the fan right there. I'll probably put it closer to my face. My keys at the ready with my pepper spray, my two lanterns, and then I showed you how I rigged the sky roof. And um, not supposed to rain, hopefully no bird like poops or anything, but um, it's not over where I'm sleeping at least, so that wouldn't be the end of the world. But yeah, it's pretty toasty in here. I'm going to leave the car open just until it gets all the way dark, and then I'll shut the hatch back and turn on the fan and hope I don't melt to death. <laughs> it's 84 and I feel like, I feel like I, I gotta close the hatch now or it's gonna be buggy. But um, I'm actually gonna pack it in, it's about nine and I wanna get up really early so I'll let you know how the sleeping goes <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> This is the best part. Waking up and looking up at this. And hearing the birds. Ah, I love it. Good morning. I'm really hoping I don't drop the camera on my face. <laughs> oh. It's a little after 6. I um, had set my alarm for 4.45 to try to catch the sunrise, which I was really excited about. But it took me so long to fall asleep last night because I was so hot. I like turned in at about 9.45. Last time I looked at the time, it was about 12.45. So that was that. But honestly, I wasn't even like frustrated or upset about it. I was just like, I gotta wait till I cool down a little bit. And I just kind of hung out. <laughs> I don't know, it worked out fine. I went through so many different iterations. Like, I moved the bed area a couple of times. <laughs> I tried sleeping. Finally, I realized I was just too hot on this pad. And that's what helped me fall asleep. So I just fell asleep on the yoga mat. And I had, I'd like, stripped down. <laughs> and then... Very early this morning, about 3, I woke up freezing and, like, sleeping on the hard floor. Not so comfortable. So I put all my clothes back on and got the pad, and I feel much better. But, yeah. I think it was a success. I think I'm learning things, and, um, I'm going to try this again sometime. But, yeah, I liked it. So I had this plugged in all night. It charged my watch and my phone. And it ran this little fan for most of the night. I turned it off about uh, 4. Yeah, probably when my alarm went off 4.45 this morning. And it's at 95%. I mean, <laughs> the 
these things are not pulling a lot, but still. It didn't make any noise or generate any heat. It's really bright because I just opened the hatch, but I just thought I'd show you if you're curious about how the Yeti performs in a car for a very long time in 90 degree heat. My bag of ice is still mostly ice. That's why I splurged on this. I did a lot of research on coolers. Embarrassing amount of research on coolers, but you know, it's expensive. So I didn't want to buy something this expensive without being sure. And I love it. And I'm realizing I forgot to bring a bowl, but that's okay. I'll just eat it like, oh, you know what I have is this. I have the container that I had the veggies in last night. I just wiped it out. And um, I can mix my breakfast in there. This is perfect because... I, don't, I didn't bring anything to like really wash. I could take it to the bathroom and wash dishes, but instead I'll just pop the lid on it and wash it when I get home. All packed up, ready to go. I think that's all I do. I don't have to like do anything else, right? I don't think so. Okay. Not complicated. It's going on 7.30 and that camera is definitely going to fall over. I'm just driving really slow out of the camp. That was really fun. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it later, but right now I want to do a slightly bigger, good morning, a slightly bigger hike before it gets hot and it's still pretty early in the day and it's going to be another scorcher. So I am heading up to the north. I think they call it the North Unit of the Illinois State Park, Illinois Beach State Park, which is a very long park, and it is cut into two units, and the the decommissioned nuclear power plant kind of cuts them off, so my original idea was just to leave the car there, like, parked, and just hike up that way, but it's just too long. It's actually a 20-minute drive to get to the top of the, of the, um, park and uh, start the other hike. So I've picked up the seven mile loop. I don't know if I'm going to do all seven miles. I read some of the reviews say parts of the trail are underwater because of the corroding of the beach by the lake um, in recent years. So I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. And then I'll head home. I'm just, just enjoying being, ooh, train tracks just enjoying being outside in nature I just it calms me so so well and I yeah anxiety levels have been high but this has been really just what I needed despite the like hotness I really wasn't bothered I'm like kind of surprised that I wasn't I do not like being hot I don't know that many people do but I really don't and um I wasn't bothered by it. I was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna look out the sunroof at the night sky and it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm gonna get on a real road now, so here we go. Let's go hiking. Look at this magic. Whoa. I've already lost the trail. I think because of the beach corrosion. <laughs> Whoa, look at all the downed trees. Oh my gosh. It's a little sad, but also kind of magical. That doesn't sound right. Look at these masks. This is the corrosion, you guys. Like, the lake is entrenching upon the forest. Nuts. I'm really glad I put bug spray on because, wow, <laughs> there are a lot of bugs.
have a wonderland maze. I saw a little snake, a little garden snake. It was very scared of me. I was not scared of it. The lake is right there. It's probably back that you can't all see it. But this is just so beautiful. It's like a painting. It's part forest, part prairie. really obnoxious motorist in the far distance, but other than that, it's just really peaceful. And there's somebody coming and I'm talking to the camera. Hello, little frog. Are you alive? on top of those dried reeds are birds nests because I thought I saw a little, tiny little yellow finch go into one that are their wasps nests I I don't know anybody know I thought I'd chat with you for a minute while I'm in the shade for a few yards at least um, it's a really beautiful path it's very peaceful it is a lot in the Sun this is like really nice to be in the shade for a minute um, not a lot of other walkers, but quite a few people on bikes. I think it's a popular bike path. Uh, just if you're interested. I got to the pond, the sand pond, which was the three mile mark. And I could have gone the other loop. It looked like it was mostly on a road though. I could be wrong, but it just felt anyway that I wanted to turn around at that point. So I did. Oh, there's a deer and her baby. Oh, I just missed filming it. They just frolicked into the meadow. Okay, anyway. So I'm on my way back now. And yeah, my arm is stuck. <laughs> I'm out of the vlogging game. Um, here, I'm gonna be back in the sun. No, I don't think see them. They must have gone into the woods. So probably, not sure if you can see it, the Lake Michigan's right there. Meadow to forest right there. It's just, I think it's just beautiful, peaceful. It's warm, but there's a nice breeze today. And this is a really nice wrap up to my first car camping experience. A few notes that I have. I think, and I do, want to do this more. I think I'm gonna have to rig some sort of platform so I can make sure I can sleep level. Cause that feels important now that I've slept not level. <laughs> um, I mean, for one night it's fine, but if I'm gonna do more than that, that might be a nice thing to figure out. Especially if it's just something that I can just put in my garage when I'm not in mommy mode, you know? Using my car in that way. Two, figure out a better fan system. That little fan was nice, but I could have had something a bit more robust or maybe an additional fan um, for sure. And was that it? Those are the main things, I think. If I can think of anything else, I'll come back and share with you. But yeah, I felt really like, I guess I would like to bring firewood in certain situations. I am considering getting some sort of rooftop storage, but again, those rooftop boxes, they're pretty big investments, so I kinda wanna be sure before I invest in one, so I probably will do a few more trips before I figure that out. But it would be nice to put like firewood. I also would love to learn how to paddleboard, and I could have like an inflatable paddleboard to bring on lakeside trips and that kind of stuff could go up in a rooftop box. So, yeah. Some thoughts, some things I'm considering. But I was pleased as punch with my Jackery. I mean, considering I'm thinking of using it for longer trips where I would be powering all of my equipment, my computer, my phone, my multiple cameras, like, that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah. 
some sort of like trash. Uh, yes, a little trash can, which is on my list. I just forgot to buy it. And um, to bring like my whole cooking setup and see how that works out. So those are kind of my thoughts for the next time. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed myself. And it's such a beautiful weekend. It's hard to believe. It's actually the first weekend of June. And it's 90 degrees. Which is hot. But it's not humid. And we do get very humid here in the Midwest. But it is blessedly not humid. And I think that's what makes it tolerable. I think if it was 90 degrees and humid, I would maybe not be having such a good time. I made it back. So, like I said, it was just a, it was a really fun time and just very soothing for me. This kind of stuff soothes my spirit. I'm gonna head home now. Um, take a well, much needed shower. And oh, I know I'll get questions about Winnie. I'm gonna go pick Winnie up. I dropped Winnie off at um, Aunt Julie's, who's Winnie's long time best friend pup sitter extraordinaire and yeah i would love nothing more than to bring winnie on these sorts of adventures but first of all she's 11 going on 12 major floof ball total suburban princess loves her air conditioning in this kind of heat she can only do about a 20 minute walk and i just did a two hour walk and I did a two hour walk yesterday too, a two and a half hour walk yesterday. She would have melted. And she would not have been comfortable in the car in the evening. So she might be an early spring, late fall kind of camper. She might not be a camper at all because I like to hike. And if she, if she loved that kind of stuff, I would totally like do all the things necessary to make sure it was comfortable for her to bring her, but she does not. After 20 minutes around suburbia, <laughs> just a gentle walk, she's like, when are we going home, Mom? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's where Winnie is. She's well taken care of. And I don't have to worry about putting her into a situation that she's not comfortable in. Which I wouldn't want to do any time, but especially as she's in her senior years and, you know, definitely slowing down in that way, for sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming on my adventure with me. I very much enjoyed sharing it with you. I have lots more little adventures planned and hopefully a big one coming up this summer too. We'll see. I never count on things really with between COVID and just life stuff, but it may happen. But regardless, there will be wandering. There will be wandering with wonder. And, um, and I hope to share them with you. I hope you're all well. Thank you for watching. Take very good care. Bye.